to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed.
and every adoration that we bring forth to you from this place Lord we pray that you forever remain the priority of our heart I pray oh God tonight that you will open our eyes again you will bless us let your word come with power let there be miracles signs and wonders tonight in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and amen. Let's appreciate the worship team. God bless you. Please greet one another and be seated. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. How was your day? I'm excited about what I'm about to teach because... I am a believer in the power of the word of God. Not just in the power of the word, but its ability to do what it says it will do. Are we together? All through scripture, every time people did not get the required results, in searching for what went wrong, the word of God was never to be blamed. Are we together? Yes. The word of God has been proven to be consistent. And if we apply our hearts to that word, the Bible declares that there shall be a performance. So I want your heart to be expectant tonight. Don't be careless about this or any other meeting. The presence of God is very special to me. And um, when people trivialize the presence of God... I'm not only sad, I am shocked because I have learned by experience the richness of God's presence. Five minutes in his presence can give you something a lifetime will not give you. I know most times people think we just say these things just for the sake of it. But it is true. It is true. I have learned the valuable lesson of making the presence of God a priority. Wonderful testimonies, great things he's doing, but these are not the deeds of a man. In his presence, there are many things. In his presence, the grace, the empowerment that you need is there. Two, in his presence, his wisdom is there. You will always find the wisdom of God where his presence is. You will not find the wisdom of God in a library. You will not find the wisdom of God in, in some kind of socialist gathering. The wisdom of God resides where he is. He is the fountain of wisdom. And it is in his light that we see light. Are we together? His power is in his presence. The very factor that is responsible for God's dimension of results found in his presence without his presence there is no other agency of fabricating his kind of results you can get some kind of results but not his results in his presence there is a possibility for restoration what a powerful powerful revelation that it doesn't matter what has happened in my life and your life when we come into God's presence all of a sudden a possibility exists that realities can be turned again in our favor. In his presence, there is deliverance. Separation from spirits, influences, and factors that can limit us is called deliverance. 
deliverance is not just separation from spirits alone separation from information is called deliverance wrong information separation from negative factors separation from negative perceptions transformation renewal is also deliverance are we together in his presence your faith is lifted what is your faith your ability to believe god to be convicted about his ability and to act in light of that understanding it is only the presence of god that can guarantee access to faith from morning till this time we've heard enough information to dampen your faith and rubbish everything you know about god you've probably heard reports of people who have died you've probably seen people sick oppressed and all of that and those things have a way of be clouding our presence the psalmist knew the value of the presence of god listen you don't you don't just say you have attended a service just because you came and sat down and you were the witness of a program if nothing entered you you didn't come to church i hope you know that because church is not the place there are certain things that must make a meeting become that place of encounter and one of it is your ability to receive something you never knew or that something be activated in you so please don't just come and sit down just as a, you know that coming to the house of god can be addictive so you can be carried away that because i am addicted i have incorporated coming for koinonia as part of my lifestyle you can convince yourself that regular visitation is equal to transformation no hallelujah i value his presence i have gotten more from his presence than i've gotten from any other place and any other person believe me when i tell you this my foolishness was eroded when i came to his presence my faith was built when i came to his presence something culture could not do for me no uncle ever gave me anything his presence has given me no educational institution no counseling or advice ever gave me what his presence gave me so i will dwell in the presence of the lord and abide under the shadow of his sing i will dwell i will dwell in the presence of the lord Listen, they carried the rod of a man called Aaron. No root. Nothing should grow when it's not connected to the earth. It's a law. But in the presence of God, rules changed overnight. And so fast, you took a rod that is lifeless. Growth must always be in connection to the earth. If the earth is not involved, growth should not happen. Yet in the presence of God, a rod overnight bordered you see that possibilities happening in his presence that one person can sit down quietly and at the end of this meeting you are carrying a level of grace you cannot even account for how did it come the word of god is coming and then your eyes is opening not just like illumination real visions being opened all of a sudden you are sitting down maybe in any of the overflows or listening and faith enters your spirit and you say this is it i found my key listen let me tell you you must know the word that is spoken and the word you have found they are not the same they are not the same a word can be declared the word can be declared but there is a word that you find your eyes is looking for something lord thank you for all the words that apostle is bringing but there is a sent word i'm searching for it the bible says if you seek her talking about wisdom you don't get you don't get wisdom just by being careless sitting around and hoping it will come you search it like someone looking for something that is missing lord what is the word for the anointing upon my life what is the word 
what is the word and all of a sudden it may be in one example there it comes your word not a corporate word a rima revealed word to you you will see something no one has seen and you will stand up on the strength of that the bible says man shall not live listen carefully by bread alone physical things man shall not live by certificates alone man shall not live just by human connections alone but you will live by the revealed word that proceeds not just the one you read in the bible there is a word you read from the bible but there is a word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord you can read your bible but it's the one he speaks to you through it he says the lord appeared again to samuel in shiloh by his word an appearance by his word so please don't be careless i can know whether the word of god is working in your life i can know whether all you've been receiving is scriptures or the revealed word let me tell you if it is the revealed word it will rubbish darkness in your life believe me so let's not just come and sit tonight and then here and let me what new mystery what new dimension no father send something send something let there be a consolation to my christian experience that you are alive don't say it doesn't matter jesus caused the victory for not being fruitful it was taken from the earth and if you take from the resources of the earth something is expected to be produced from it are we together if your life does not bear fruit you will be frustrated in your christian experience i guarantee you don't mind people who say it doesn't matter it does matter if your life does not bear fruit in fact if it does not bear fruit 15 verse 8 of john says herein is our father glorified herein is our father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples you see that what do we find in his presence distribution of graces this is one thing i want you to always be aware of all that happens to you is not what your ears is hearing grace the grace of god is a living thing is alive it's not oil no there is an unction it can talk it can teach so as the word of god is coming with every point there is a grace not all of it may be applicable for you but let me tell you if you find the grace for you i give you a guarantee that grace will force like a demon spirit forces a human being to manifest its characteristic that anointing will force you to produce results that is consistent with the career of it if the healing anointing comes upon you it has nothing to do with whether you want to heal or not that anointing will alter you until that anointing can flow through you there's something we teach i think in geography or agric um called um tropic movements you see that that certain plants can tilt towards the sun we call it phototropism it doesn't matter the the plant will be forced by a law to find where sun is and grow towards that direction when you put a fence it's called geotropism it will break and push and go down that's what the anointing does your own is to pray that the real anointing comes truly let me tell you if the grace for wealth truly comes I know there is a place for intelligence but brothers and sisters the assignment of the anointing is to force your body to allow it produce so i can know what grace is on you by the result it produces a woman is a woman because of many factors among them the ability to conceive a man cannot conceive if you conceive as a man either the holy ghost helped you or you are lying please pay attention distribution of graces i want you to always imagine when we come for koinonia imagine that there is a cloud this is how i want you to be the bible says they were baptized into moses did moses ever carry water and pour on their head as the word is sent there is an unction this is what you must look out for there is an unction this unction you must understand it it is that factor that makes the word work 
it's not just i got it you write nonsense and get up and your life does not produce there must be proof of your listening it's not just this ear alone it's not just this ear your life is at the mercy of which grace is working very simple there's no sentiments about it if the required grace is not there no matter what you do in the flesh it will never produce that result listen let me tell you this if i claim that the wisdom of god is working in my life and that that wisdom did not come by that grace the spirit of wisdom no matter how you try everyone will know this is sophia human wisdom when the wisdom of god comes upon an old uneducated woman you will see the lapse in her unrenewedness but you will still see the result happen regardless of the limitation are we together people of god please i want i i beg you let's take our destiny serious and not just dilly-dal and play games and waste our time and be frustrated and say lord why is this thing not entering me listen let me tell you this paul called himself a wise master builder you see when you are listening to a man you have perceived the hand of god upon his life listen with an open heart don't come to change the equation when you've not gotten any result it's pride when I listen to people who have results, I don't listen to alter the equation. Don't trivialize results. It's more than you see. There are dynamics happening. It's not just about what you hear. There is a grace. Many of us forget the grace dimension. So we just focus on the information. And at the end of it, you are enlightened but not empowered. You need both. It takes enlightenment and empowerment not just enlightenment alone enlightenment prepares your mind to cooperate with the anointing but it is empowerment that is the factor for the results cunningly devise fables enlighten but they don't empower anointings and impartations alone empower but their operation is limited because your mind has not been being transited through transformation to align well to get the best of the anointing it is always a cooperation of light and that empowerment please pray one minute and say lord change my life today show me something change my life outside pray everywhere pray there has to be a way there has to be a way around my spiritual growth lord there has to be a way i admit i may not know the way now but there has to be a way the bible says there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there if it is not working for you it doesn't mean it does not work or it cannot work please pray show me something oh god tonight that will be worth my sacrifice here open my eyes to a reality tonight that will be worth the commitment the investment hallelujah praise the lord please sit down let me just tell you a little story before i start teaching something very interesting happened today usually these things happen and they've happened for a few messages what i have no business sharing what i'm supposed to be sharing today i prepared something it's been in my heart and i've been waiting for god to allow me share it but i just decided to take out some time to lie down and rest i wasn't even sleeping i just put my head and i was facing my pillow and i just saw the theme like you write on a pillow that's it that's how i just saw it and i said wow this was around what time afternoon 
I just had to get up, settle down, plan to look at it. And this was what I saw, the lifter of men. That's the statement that I saw. I just laid down quietly and the hand of the Lord came. When his presence comes, you will know. Hmm. Tonight's message, I, I, I believe that there is an unusual, a strange grace that will come. When I saw it, please help them. Ah, my God. The lifter of men. Yes, he is. There is a name he is called, the lifter of men. Let's pray in tongues for a few minutes. Shagato kata palaka ta prete kete karatu shi. Shekete karuka tu sabrande kaparuka tu salabriata kata. Shakata baraka tu sabrande kete. Kaparaka tu salabriata. Legete karuta sabaruka tu shiadaba. Rando sabrata kala tu Please make sure you are praying. Don't worry about what is happening to your neighbor. Alabaka prakato salabaria da bala da bala da bala. Man, a drop. day that rise up against me many are they which say where is your help we pray you are the shield my glory, you lift my head. For oh, thou, O oh Lord, art shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter of my head. sit down if you can be sensitive to the impartations that happen it's been my personal cry to God that every time I teach the grace component this is this is the secret this is the secret of results when the anointing behind the word backs up the word and enters you it must produce what the word says it's possible for the word to come without the anointing but when both of them come believe me it must produce the lifter of men let's discuss please sit down <laughs> i believe that the lord wants to unveil to us tonight the spiritual pathway to greatness there is a pathway to greatness undeniable please help those under the anointing undeniable ah, i'm telling you i sense a strong anointing very strong anointing very strong impartation i just pray that we'll be able to teach that grace is what will make you return with a testimony yes when the anointing comes on you don't just think maybe is coming okay i'm anointed no 
when the anointing comes on you you should rejoice because you should know that with that grace then a testimony is guaranteed that's how God answers prayers by supplying the grace the anointing the anointing the anointing does not make the difference it is the difference hallelujah thank you Jesus that a man can be weak and small today but something can happen to that man and turn his seed into an oak tree that someone can be small brothers and sisters please hear me whether in ministry whether in business that something can happen to Joshua Selman can happen to anybody right where you are not you don't he has nothing to do with geography that a system of the kingdom look at the mystery of a seed you pick a little seed even a mustard seed plant it in the earth expose it to a system and all of a sudden regardless of gravity regardless of whatever that seed sprouts who says you must remain at this level forever in the kingdom growth is a possibility in the kingdom men can start small but it's a cost to end small in the kingdom spiritually you can start small in the anointing you can start small in prophecy in visions you can start small but that you must accent a dimension in the spirit where you are weighty the word is weight weight capacity capacity you can start small financially but God can give you weight weight in this kingdom you can start small ministerially you can start small in the gift of the spirit the issue is not the smallness no matter how big or small a seed is a seed is a seed because it will still die but if that seed does die then it will now begin to reveal the potentials there please sit down help us holy spirit help us help us help us help us i love the way i love the way god helps us in this ministry i'm an organized person but not at the expense of the wisdom of the spirit when his wisdom comes that's it regardless of what it is and let me tell you you've heard me say there are not many sermons that god shows me like that and you follow every sermon that i tell you god revealed certain things to me you see the impact on those who believe it and receive it the lifter of men please sit down i believe it's one of the signs and wonders that the lord wants to do in this season to just lift men like that and use their lifting to prove to principalities and powers that i am still god that you have concluded about a sister and a brother a family based on whatever parameters let me tell you something with god when god wants to lift men he doesn't discuss it with anybody this is god god can lift somebody who was a drunkard yesterday regardless of what you think i thank god because he does not consult my enemies to lift me if god had to consult the wicked to lift me they would say because of my father's mistake i will not rise if god were to consult me maybe my tribe will be a disadvantage someone will come and say no this guy is from the north he should not be doing ministry at a global level maybe someone would have come to use all kinds of parameters but god the lifter of men he said jacob have i loved esau have i hated it's as simple as that i am the god of the universe i can lift whomsoever i choose that's what god has chosen to do with this ministry that's what god has chosen to do with my life god can choose to lift men at my level as a human being I can choose to lift men in whatever capacity I can someone can sit down and say I choose to give you admission it's within his power 
another person can stand up and say i choose to pay your rent i choose to give you a lift men and god can say i choose to lift you i choose to open your ministry to a horizon you have never seen i choose to wipe the tears of your family in one week i say no lord my plan was for one year and god says this is god talking it is one week i have chosen please sit down let's see how god will help us tonight the waters have been stirred the waters instead God does these things that men will fear him lifting in the kingdom is a mystery and a system it can be studied every single person in the kingdom please sit down if you can every single person in the kingdom desires growth desires greatness greatness is not a carnal word are we together now greatness is not a demonic word greatness is not a word for unbelieving people greatness is a kingdom language are we together now it's a system where god enlarges you in influence and capacity where he makes you a voice so that you can legislate on his behalf greatness is god's desire god is an enlarger he can expand the coast of men he did it for jabez he did it for the nation of israel he can expand people the very system of the growth of a plant as a plant grows it doesn't remain at the same length or breadth it expands so with growth should come greatness with growth should come increase i'm going to do my discussion tonight in threefold and i'll be very fast wherever we stop tonight we will just pray and then we can continue next week i decided to break it into three dimensions listen very carefully the lifter of men i want to share with you the kingdom system of lifting many of you by this teaching i believe you will find in this roadmap this compass where you are for many of you tonight's teaching will minister hope for many of you tonight's teaching will supply the staying power to continue for many of you tonight's teaching will lead to repentance a realignment because you find out that the path you are taking is not going to lead you there for many of us what you need in tonight's teaching is the grace to continue and for many of us what you need to learn tonight is thanksgiving because you will find out that your prayers have already been answered are we together the first dimension we are going to look at in the lifting of men is what i call the journey of faith write it down and let's discuss the journey of faith there is a system with which god lifts men in the kingdom in as much as he lifts men instantaneously the pathway that pathway to greatness there is a spiritual science there is a technology it can be learned are we together hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 let's start off with it tonight the bible says for without faith listen carefully for without faith it is impossible to please him for he listen carefully he that cometh to god must not may it's not a choice must believe two things one that he exists the journey to greatness starts with the journey of faith coming to a point of persuasion about the reality of god the bible says that in that journey of faith the first encounter you need is an encounter that furnishes the reality of the god you are dealing with listen carefully one of the things that the body of christ must learn when believers get born again get filled with the holy spirit they need to be taught how to live by faith please write it down this kingdom operates by faith this kingdom operates by faith everything in this kingdom is faith dependent you cannot do business with god when you are still in doubt of the reality of his person not his power that he exists 
I'm showing you the, the way God guides people. The Holy Spirit, the journey of faith encapsulates everything, the systems that the Holy Spirit brings you into so that you can have encounters and conviction. You don't become, no great man is in doubt of what his, his persuasions. That is something you must settle before you get to certain dimensions. Because the challenges that are before you will require strong conviction about the person of God. Are we together? The Bible says, whosoever comes to God must believe that he is. You will think it's a simple statement until challenges stand before you. And you will find out that for the first time, you are joining the mindset of an atheist to doubt is god really alive there is there is there are certain giants that you face on the mountain brothers and sisters if you have not settled the reality of god you will doubt ask john the baptist you will think just because john the baptist ordained jesus the reality of his godhead the reality of his person had been furnished in John. When John was frustrated to a point where his human weakness was at his prime, John sent somebody. He said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? How about John? You ordained me into ministry. John said, with what is happening now, no. If you were God, you are too mighty to leave me in the prison. Go and ask him, oh, I'm no longer sure jesus had to tell the disciples when things started going bad he said who do men say that i am and he said who do you say you would think that that was an easy question nobody could answer don't assume you know god because your knowledge of god is what will strengthen you is what will make you stand and say i'm not going back that mountain i was climbing many believers in church think knowing god is singing christian songs they think knowing god is praying in tongues just because you are saying bah, 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 you are just praying say i know god or knowing god is an election i am elder this i am pastor this i am apostle this do you know god of course i do let me ask you that same question do you know god <laughs> you will be surprised that you are shocked now you may not honestly be able to answer that question do you know God? Do you know God? The Bible says whoever must come must believe that he exists. There's something called April Fool. You know what April Fool is? April Fool is an attempt to play games with your mind. Is that true? Sometimes can be expensive. So they can tell you something like, Pastor Alpha, an alert has just come for you. Whereas it's not true. That's how many people think God is. And situations and circumstances can push you to a point where you believe God has calmed you. Read the frustrations of David in the book of Psalms. Many times David would talk as though he was not born again. Many believers would say, how about David? David. No, brothers and sisters, if we are honest, the pressures of life can change your perception in a way that even you, you have to ask God for forgiveness. Are we together? Ask a woman who has been barren for 22 years. No child. Ask a woman who has been serving in the house of God for 22 years. No child. Ask her, is there God? And you see her cry and say, don't ever ask me that question again. She's serving God, but she does not want to confront it because confronting it will bring anger. Where is that God for 22 years? Where was he when I was fasting? where was he when i was praying don't be too quick to assume you know god i'm not saying have you received zoe i'm not in doubt of that the encounter that gives men stamina unto death are we together when they caught jesus the disciples believed that Jesus will do all that he is known for again. And Jesus gave himself freely. They ran away. Why did they run away? They didn't run away just because. They ran away because they felt cheated. 
you can know it because they ran back to their fishing what a stupid man you've wasted our time you proposed to us that we we're going to be mighty men my mother even liars sitting at my right and left and now look the nonsense you have made out of my life i go a fishing and the other disciples say we go with you and suddenly jesus appears little children have you any catch and they were looking who is that and when they discerned it was the master the bible says peter washed himself and ran and came and jesus looked at him simon bajona lovest me thou more than this lovest thou me more than this and he said well lord i do feed my lamb he began to talk with him and you would think after that one jesus said, okay guys thank you the bible says in acts chapter one for 40 days jesus remained with the people and was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom and afterwards he left and the holy ghost came brothers and sisters do you know miracles don't make you know god they can help your faith many people saw lazarus raised from the dead but it did not make them know god the presence of miracles are not enough the only entity that is capable of helping men know god is the holy ghost there is no amount of education and bible study that can help you know god no the knowledge of god is a reality that only the holy ghost is able to help men the lifter of men follow me carefully so the, the starting point of a believer's journey to a realm of greatness brothers and sisters hear me carefully is the journey of faith coming to a point where you are persuaded beyond beyond manipulation that god is alive you have come to a point where your results are too small to prove or declare otherwise the reality of god you have come to a point where even when you are drinking gary no sugar you don't just say god where are you you don't know him are we together there is an encounter i've taught you what an encounter is an encounter is a supernatural experience that makes the a reality real to you it furnishes the reality of a person or a thing to you i have touched this gentleman i have felt his arms i can't deny if you say oh you touched a bag of rice you are not going to tell me i touched a bag of rice because i've touched rice too i've touched a human being this is not rice this is a human being so no matter how you try to manipulate me there is a level of certainty everyone say the journey of faith <laughs> the bible declares in romans chapter 1 verse 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 that the just shall live by faith not the just shall get by faith the just the template for the life of the just in this kingdom is faith everybody say faith your persuasion your persuasion about who god is not what he can do bible faith starts from a revelation of who god is it is only when you know who he is that you can believe what he can do many of us jump the encounter of who god is and we just go straight to what he can do must believe that he is and then when you are done believing that he is then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek it no seek power now that you know he exists when you seek him passionately there is a reward for it the just brothers and sisters shall live by faith are we together now and you see the system of faith is such that except there is a word there cannot be faith even if you encounter a person it only produces conviction there cannot be faith because faith is an action word 
an action only happens when a word has come either to instruct you or give you something to do john i mean matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says man shall not live by bread alone this is jesus speaking responding to satan but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the god you have encountered man shall not live by bread alone but by every rima the revealed word that proceeds in this kingdom we live by the word of god we live by the speakings of god not just scripture not just verses not just chapters we don't live by verses we don't live by chapters we live by the speakings of the word the chapters and the verses are only containers they are not the word they carry the word the breath of the spirit opening those chapters and verses you see listen the message behind a chapter is the word of god not the story the message you may have been reading scripture but the message in the scripture is where the word of god is because that's where your instructions are hinged upon are we together now the journey of faith many people never become great in this life because their cultural experiences are greater than the revelation of who god is did you know that every time satan wants to destroy you wants to limit your mind he uses the information that is already in your mind he doesn't bring an information outside there is a reality in your mind so he calls you and he says i hope you are aware that you are from this state and you say i remember the information i've gathered about that state is that people don't prosper and satan says that's exactly what i'm saying and it is that raw material he begins to push you are you aware that you read hausa or you read french and are you aware that in nigeria if you study some of these things you may not have an opportunity for a good job you say yes i'm aware satan uses the content of your environmental conditioning as the platform to limit you from believing god listen brothers and sisters please hear me especially if you are in ministry or going or going into ministry spend as much time as you can having encounters with god you will drink from that fountain for life if that fountain dead dries before you get to the promised land you may not arrive there are things today that will never shake me because there is a solid encounter about who god is listen if you don't know who god is you will never stand well because all kinds of things will come to derail you you know how many pieces of papers people have passed to my life in the name of prophecy you know how many kinds of things you know how many dreams and visions people send to my phone apostle i saw something god is going to destroy you next week you don't know god you will die like a chicken because of the conviction of a man someone just gets up and looks at you and says god is going to destroy your family we found out that your grandfather was a wizard and they, and you now go back and believe is because you don't know who god is when you really know who god is you will learn in your knowledge of god that the lord is gracious and compassionate he is slow to anger and rich in love the knowledge of god is what strengthens your conviction about operating in the kingdom david knew god what a man david knew god God gave him an option. Should I give you over to your enemies or to you? David said, no, 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 no. God, at least me and you, these men, they are wicked, but you are compassionate. What has your not knowing God cost you in life? Impatience. Not knowing God and not knowing how he operates has destroyed a lot of people. They call light darkness and they call darkness light. He that cometh unto God must believe. The first thing the Lord began to do in my life, brothers and sisters, is not to give me anointing. It's not to give money. It is always the journey of faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Lord, how will this destiny be built? By faith. Lord, I'm an orphan. My father is dead. My mother is dead. And God says, you must learn how we operate in this kingdom. 
it is by faith what does that mean by my word if i speak to you notice that my power follows my word so if i speak to you you must learn to trace the direction of my power by looking for where my word is anywhere my word is not stop looking for my power there if you find power there is divination my power follows my word if i say i will lift you then you stay at that area of the world that's where the anointing will meet you the anointing follows what god said the anointing has no business doing anything god has not said you can know where the anointing is by finding out what has god said if god said i will exalt you don't look for the anointing for any other thing the anointing for exaltation will remain until that word comes to pass then returns back to god as a messenger job done then he will say something again then the anointing will start looking for it the anointing does not just move at random the anointing backs up the word so the issue is not where is the anointing the issue is what has god said are you getting what i'm saying many believers let me tell you why we don't get miracles we roam around around areas and zones where god has not said anything and we keep crying for anointing to come and the holy ghost tells you this kingdom is a faith kingdom you don't just cry for anointing to come you cry for his word send your word oh god and the anointing follows that word you want to build a ministry what did god say nothing so you just carve out a ministry lord you must anoint this ministry the anointing said no way i don't work that way i walk i respect the word spoken notice satan does not fight anointing he fights the word because he knows that the word has the word like like when president buhari comes to zaria you don't need to bring el rufai El Rufai will necessarily be part of that entourage. That's how it works. Many believers don't pay attention to find out what God is saying. We pay attention reading the Bible. We pay attention reading devotionals, which is good. But to be able to understand what God is saying, look, notice that the secrets of the success of people, they didn't walk by faith just by reading the Bible at random. They walk by faith by staying to hear. We are going to fight. Oh God, what is your, what, what is your word? And God says, I will give you victory. They say, guys, let's rejoice. Victory would be guaranteed. If you don't live by faith you will end where your parents ended it takes faith to transit you let me tell you waiting for somebody to give you a guarantee of job after school is foolishness it will never happen everybody you see that has risen to any point of greatness in the kingdom did so by faith the reason why many of us don't get results is that our faith is not in God our faith is in men auxiliary support systems my uncle is a senator in Ibadan my uncle is a senator in Uyo I my uncle is coming out for presidency next year and so when you say those things and pride in them and say no I can't fail and the Bible says woe to any man who puts his strength in a man the greatest of any man can fail you so God begins to teach you son I want you to be great that's the promised land but this journey is going to be by faith and he said Lord at the point of this journey i just have one gideon's international one bible no revelation no wisdom god says don't worry all i need you to do follow where my word is and you will get there follow my word follow my word follow my word so when you open the bible all you do is to just read oh i will bless you mm -hmm. When you read it, read it like the will of a man to you. Many people read the Bible like God speaking to the disciples. I have a personalized Bible. It was a gift that was sent to me years ago. Everywhere they wrote the name of anybody for good, they changed it to Joshua Selman. The whole Bible. I don't use it now, but it's a powerful revelation. So, thus saith the Lord too. You see it written there, Joshua Selman. Fear not, I have redeemed you. And he's speaking to me now I have called you by name fear not fear not that means the anointing for courage is somewhere because God has spoken to me 
are you seeing now you can know what anointing is there don't you see how the anointing moves in koinonia when the word comes the grace for it is what comes god healed blind Bartimaeus. he did not become a rich man his cry his demand was to be healed god spoke to him in the area of healing the anointing that came was for healing blind Bartimaeus never prospered just because god spoke healing no. it is the word that comes to you that controls the anointing that follows you god called benihin into the healing ministry there are many auxiliary graces but the strongest grace that operates is the grace that came with that word for as long as that word remains on him that grace remains on him are we together yes pastor if i come to your house and you ask your wife to go and bring minerals for me you gave a word the performance will be in the area of where minerals your wife will not go and carry your shoe you can still give me your shoe but you chose to give me minerals because that's what you saw that will minister to me more and you say wife go and bring mineral she will go to the kitchen or wherever they keep the minerals and carry it and bring it the performance was in the direction of the word you see please sit down sir you see that we neglect the word of god yet we want performance many believers including those who study the bible don't take the word of god seriously let me tell you if god has spoken to you and you know he spoke to you die there this is faith these careless things people do around one leg here two weeks later you will never rise like that but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded God you told me I may be the last born in my family but you have assured me that in my father's lifetime they will glorify God I believe you I take you I believe that word your reception of the word the anointing begins to come because you have believed the Bible says who has believed our report it is to that person the arm of the Lord the arm of the Lord is his right hand of power it is who believe the report that sees the right hand not who wants to see the right hand brothers and sisters in this kingdom there is no advantage to your life until the word of god comes to you hear it the word of god is your advantage in life whether the word revealed through illumination from scripture or spoken to your spirit by the holy ghost Put together a miracle service at the end of every month lord this is your word yes sir and that journey of faith god guarantees that every time the anointing to make sure that word comes from him see when you train yourself don't you know that it's risky sometimes you hear me talking about people oh there's somebody here the anointing you think i'm just guessing you try it and see whether it happens there is you train yourself you don't say lord let the anointing go there you already know that once the word of god comes the requisite grace will follow it come on now come on now so god comes to a family brothers and sisters where nobody becomes anything and god now speaks a word to that family he sends that word to jacob and intends that that word lights upon israel and god comes to you and says, mary you are a young woman a young virgin but i want to speak to you you will carry that holy thing and mary said really be it unto me and the anointing that will force her womb seed or no seed to take the seed of the word of god the incorruptible seed that abides forever and jesus came so the next time you see people doing extraordinary exploits don't say they are lucky they believed they believed lord will you really do this i believe you lord look at me the last person who would have helped me in life just died and god said a human being died but my word is still alive keep going and he said lord school fees is tomorrow i'm in 200 level you spoke to me that i will become a professor i'm already on my way out and god says no keep your gaze on the word 
if the word is there be sure the anointing is there god's instrument god's performance factor the anointing every time i travel for ministration i don't know the cases i'm going to see i don't know who is going to come when i come for koinonia when we come for miracle service i don't say go around and find out the cases and write let me be sure you know that god sent a word and you know that the anointing is following it let me tell you if god speaks a word to your finances then keep going the journey in this life is by faith you can be weak sitting down right now and god says you are going to be the overseer of an international ministry you will communicate the purposes of god you say lord but i'm a woman i am weak and god says don't insult me i have sent my word i've sent my word i've sent my word and all of a sudden now do you know it's possible for that person to die without it coming to pass and so just because you didn't engage it you will now say you see god said it the word of god does not work automatically the same way no seed grows automatically there must be a reaction between the seed and the earth the seed has potentials to produce but you keep keep beans or maize take away moisture keep it on in your kitchen after five years you will still see it there but take the same seed do something to it add it to the earth and all of a sudden a tree will come out brothers and sisters when the lord called me there was no human being that said i will support you there was no family meeting that said oh young man we are your uncles and aunties who have decided to come together because we discovered that you will need a suit or oh, look i have an uncle in Ibadan. and he will call you it is by faith i was talking to someone i said i came to zaria with one bag one shoe i don't know how many clothes where did everything come from faith not store faith your destiny will only happen by faith that ministry you have been seeing in the dream you would keep seeing it till jesus comes it is faith that will bring it alive everybody say the journey of faith there is no great man in the kingdom who does not have a testimony of triumph to faith you read about the great men and women that god is using around the world and see the impossible situations that surrounded them kenneth e hagen was born with a heart deformity it took faith to cancel it out david yonggi cho his own limitation and imperfection some of these men were born in nations they were they, they were racist nations and everything and faith faith have you not learned that faith is the victory this is the victory that will give you the house the victory that will give you the child the victory that will turn your wilderness even our faith when the lord was speaking to me you were not there what was the guarantee brothers and sisters everything in life is a risk the only guarantee in life is faith god said it he said it in his word i have found it i know the thoughts that i think towards you joshua selman hallelujah they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end lord you really said this about me yes sir i said this son lord you said this about me yes sir behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies here's the revelation and nothing shall by any means he never said nothing shall hurt you nothing shall by there are many means with which things hurt people and god said shall by any means <sighs> you are that committed to protecting me thank you jesus it was not always rosy but faith keeps you to keep seeing the promised land even if you are inside fire 
don't let anybody fool you that is from the speakings of God into the promised land no sir the journey is far but once you face you keep your eyes like a flint then I give you a guarantee the doors will rise and settle you will still be standing it is by faith that we rise it is by faith that we reign there are people who came to Zaria to school pastor they came to Zaria with just a box they, they didn't even have admission they just came by faith I would die here today they are lecturers no house there are school of ministry students who have come now some of them came by faith just do you know if you really believe God his integrity will have to come and prove God will not allow your trust in him to be aborted it's too precious listen I'm a man of logic I'm a man of organization but no matter how organized you are in life if you must get to the other side there are times you will get up waiting for a boat you may that boat will come when you are 80 years you will just need to get up and say Lord you said I should go to the other side here I come you have to get up and jump in that's why many young men will never build because it takes faith not cement many young men will never rise up and move in life they will never go out of their parents house 40 years they are still there let's take it easy i've applied let me see how jobs will happen in life no sir no sir it's good to be responsible it's good to be as whatever as you can how much money do you have in your account to do ministry you really believe you can have enough it takes faith apostle where will the partners come from apostle if i reach lintel level apostle i wanted to buy a house and they say it's 15 million and all that i have right now is 250 naira that somebody even gave me faith is a currency we purchase things with it in the kingdom lord i believe you where are you sending me to oh god i'm sending you to south africa lord i've never gone out of nigeria son the anointing follows my word if i have spoken to you and i give you the go ahead go there are some of you as you are looking at me god is saying how long will you sit down and not arise to let me stand up for your family god has already told you you are the savior of your family what kind of vision are you waiting for lord what is the next instruction i take on that mantle what is the next instruction what is the next instruction you have told me that i will be great you have said i will not be small lord i've been crying about the class of degree i graduated with and you have come to me in your mercy and you have said you will multiply me i will not be small you will glorify me i will not be few lord i engage let my heart be the earth for the seed to be planted and brothers and sisters you will see this wonder working god who has helped some of us and produce glory out of foolish and stupid things whenever you see great results many of you sit down and think kai this people must be lucky what a lucky businessman what a lucky man of god oh papa Ia Deboye, so lucky ah lucky luck I'm a believer the journey of faith some of you this is where you are with God notice you know where you are by the kind of dealings that come God can sit down and you you say Lord I have only 500 naira and God says give everything there's something he's teaching you it's not all about parting with 500 naira he's teaching you how a day will come he will flex your spiritual muscles whether there is money or not it doesn't affect you he's weaning you from dependence to physical things i've shared with you my story i'm not saying you should do it you do it at his word i have taken trips with zero naira zero naira and return back to my destination with zero naira because god said it i remember when i was in area bz i would trek because i would believe now whether it was god i had or not i don't know but i'm not ashamed it's a training process i would sit down and trust god for grace that time no atms no nothing no branches branches don't even connect themselves i would believe that 
God put money for me in the bank and I would trek from BZ to First Bank. I would join a long queue praying in tongues, believing that I will withdraw money. I would stand there after hours, all of a sudden, I would now submit it and the person says, sorry, are you expecting some money? I'll say yes. Say, well, sorry, you need to maybe call the people. The money is not there. And imagine how heartbroken, two hours, yet I will look and say, Lord, I give you the glory. And God will be silent as if he's not hearing me. When God is silent, it's not ignorance, it's training. There's something he's doing to you. You need to learn this. Many of you have been taught that God always talks. It's not true. God talks, but he doesn't always talk. When he's training you, you keep quiet. The journey of faith. All of a sudden, they transfer something to you. And God says, carry that 10,000, buy chairs for a church. And he said, God, why are you doing this to me? I go to bed in the night and I see the visions of a great destiny. I wake up and Lord, you are humiliating me. What is this? And God says, no, I'm teaching you how to trust me. I'm teaching you. How, how will you be great when you don't learn how to trust him? How will you be able to give the car and give the house? How will you be able to give the word of knowledge among thousands of people when you are afraid, when you are still, your ego is still on the line? How will you be able to stand and say there's somebody in so 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 place? You think you can have that courage without training? No, sir. The journey of faith. One day God will lead you. You are going to have a healing ministry, and God will lead you to someone on wheelchair. You will know you had God. You will lay hands and lay hands and pray and pray and pray, and nothing will happen. You will call upon God and you will feel like God is bell. And at the end of it, in shame and embarrassment, you will turn to the people and say, I'm sorry. I, I came here full of faith. You see that I love God. And sometimes you are guilty for the honorarium they give you because nothing happened. And you go back and say, God, why did you do this? God will say, sit down, let's continue. <sighs> continue what? God will say, you passed the test. You still came back to me even in your failure. It's a sign you will never leave me even when you fail. Because if you fail, you should look for an alternative. But God watches you as you fail. And you come back and still bring the shame. Lord, I failed. They invited me for the meeting. I promised them that there will be an impartation. And at the end of that meeting, I was so disappointed. Lord, who else will I run to? And God says, come. It's a journey of faith. Is God helping somebody? Great people never become great until they learn how to take God at his word. Many of you have not learned to take God as his word. If God speaks to you, then know that everything will be all right. If God tells you your womb will carry a child, then brothers and sisters, whether or not there is a womb there, know that the anointing is going to come and produce a womb because God said so. Is the Lord speaking to us? Some of you, this is the level you are now. You are starting with God. God is working with you. Sometimes God will speak. Do you know God even uses your mistakes to help you? There are times you think you had God. You had like God said you should go out. He won't stop you and correct it. He can still use it. And you come out in the night and say, Lord, I had like you said I should come out. And you stand there 10 minutes. Nothing happens. You feel so ashamed and go back. And then you say, Lord, was it you or not? God says that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is you are working on your aptness to act when you perceive that it is me. When you are about to fall, he will protect you. You say, not so far. My might can keep you, but let's continue the training. Listen, working with God is not about accuracy. It's about your commitment to do whatever you know. God has the power to stop you from failing. We are too conscious of ourselves and our reputation. That's why we can never be great. God can speak to you and say, young man, start a pure water company. And you say, oh God, please don't, don't make a fool out of me. Where I don't even know anything about it. No. I have, except God does not speak to me. There is nothing I will do when God has not spoken. I have learned the excellency of the voice of God. 
please learn this tonight do not ever be found where the voice of god is not in. no matter what price you must pay to be sure that god is there pay it three days before koinonia started i went back for a retreat i said lord you see the enormity of the work please speak to me if you are not the one and this is not your will i will cancel this thing now and god said no son it is me so if even if Benihim calls me today and papa Ia, Deboya, and all the fathers of faith and say son we see what you are doing may the lord honor you but um you are not in the will of god i will kneel down and appreciate them and say i respect you as fathers but give me some time to go back to god but i know that i had god do you know why many of us never stay to the end we didn't take out time to be sure that it was god i believe i believe lord i believe lord i believe i believe i believe lord i In Exodus chapter 3, when God wanted to begin to walk Moses the path of greatness, notice the first thing that happened, an encounter. Moses saw a bush, a, he's standing and tending Jethro, his father-in-law's sheep. All of a sudden, a voice calls him. And Moses comes and begins a conversation with God. Who are you? Where are you talking from? Because it is on the strength of your encounter. He reveals himself to you. He reveals his words to you. He reveals the potency of that word. And then you can go. Who are you? And then in verse 15, he begins to speak. Moses said, if I go to Pharaoh, at least I know Ra. I know these gods. I have seen similitudes of them as idols. I have heard them talk. And I know, do you know it's because the nation of Israel really did not know God. That's why when they were tired, they said, build us the one we know. Please, leave this your God of Hebrews. Build the God that brought us out of Egypt. Aaron, make sure you build. And they collected all the materials and built a golden calf. Behold, everybody goes to the person you know. And if you don't know God, get ready to go to a harbor list. If you don't know God, get ready to go to a witch doctor or go somewhere. Those who go to these people are not wicked people. They are just people who don't have convictions enough. And God told Moses, he said, Go and tell them that I am has sent you. He said, I am that I am. Moses said, interesting. Which one is that? He said, okay, you are crying for an encounter. Because you can't go and stand before Pharaoh when you don't know me moses let me reveal myself and after that revelation he said moses take your rod throw it on the ground became a serpent pick it by the tail and then he called it the rod of god he said this rod wherewith you will do signs and he said go moses goes to stand before rameses his half brother who had now become the pharaoh and said thus saith the god of the hebrews let my people go and Ramesses laughed said Moses we played games together for 40 years you have been away I'm sure some poverty has changed your mindset all kinds of bad things have happened to you and he said no I met another personality the God of heaven are you going to listen to me or not he said no through his rod it became a serpent and then Pharaoh laughed and said Moses shame on you this is what you came to threaten me with janus jambas come and show this guy that egypt has grown since he last left and the guys laughed and threw their rods and then all of a sudden a snake swallows another snake does not become fat and then moses picks it up says explain it ah and pharaoh looks he couldn't pretend that did not touch him say but i'm still not convinced enough go but he must have slept in the night and said wow Janus Jambres come what happened where did that matter disintegrate to there is a God of creation revealing himself and after the last plague many of you don't know why Pharaoh cried 
Pharaoh did not let them go just because his son died. No. Let me tell you, when you study Egyptian religion, the covenant that they enter with their firstborn sons that will later become Pharaoh. Do you know Moses wrote books that are dangerous today? Because Moses was taught something. He was covenanted and was taught Moses was going to be the next Pharaoh. It would have been Pharaoh Moses, not Ramesses. So Moses was already being prepared. And in that state, he wrote certain things. And those books are still being used in occultism today. But he met the God of heaven and changed his life. And he came and demonstrated a dimension. Do you know God already told Moses that I will harden Pharaoh's heart? I hope you know. So Moses didn't go and say, God, don't send me again. I, I'm tired of this disgrace. The information has already been given. And he said, I will make you a God. The word and the anointing to make it happen, happened. And in the end, they came out in a hurry out of Egypt. Because when God says it, there is the grace to make it happen. Great things the Lord has spoken of us, O Zion. It's up to us to believe him and know that God does not lie. God does not lie. God does not lie. Dear families, listen to me. I know the things that are happening in your various families, but God does not lie. You only cry when the book has not been opened. You weep when there is no word. If the speakings of God has come your direction, then wipe your tears. Wipe your tears. Listen, do you know why David was crying? when his son was sick that he had with Bathsheba he knew if God did not speak that child must die and God knew that if he speaks the child will live so God refrained from talking till the child died if God spoke it would be impossible for that child to die and God kept quiet and when he died David said no problem he got up and washed himself and comforted himself notice how in ancient times people will stay helpless then you will now hear in the seventh month in the fifth day the word of the Lord came when the word of the Lord comes that's it they watch themselves they stand up and start rejoicing they've not fought oh, but they are already calculating how to share the land you this is your own whereas the giants they are sleeping imagine somebody sharing your property when you are still alive because the word already killed you David knew what he was doing when he stood before Goliath. He said, God just gave me bonus to make me a king. Oh, foolish giant. You are a giant and you are not wise. Don't you know it's the word of God that kills and, make a, and makes a lie? The word of God is against you. You are dead. Anything would have killed him. Not just a sling. Anything would have killed him. The word was already backing up everything. And all of a sudden, that guy died. Removed his head lifted it gave it to the birds there are things god has spoken to you go back and open your notebook before the troubles came when you started disbelieving god open the notebook and see what he told you did he not tell you by 2019 you would have entered certain dimensions and it's one year to the time and it doesn't look like it will ever happen brothers and sisters this my god this my god God is truly Jehovah Sharp Sharp. He can wake up overnight, shake himself from his throne and change your life. Yes, sir. Say, my God is able. Please say it. My God is able. Ah, apostle, but it's already been nine years delay. God can give you triplets overnight. Overnight. Overnight compress nine years to nine months healthy all of them will come out and god will say did i not tell you i can make it happen the bible never tells us jesus spent nine years in the nine months in the womb of mary there is nowhere in scripture where it was calculation of nine months no we just know that as soon as they left and went to where he could give birth mary gave birth i believe that God allowed that time just so that human beings will not start doing stupid things. 
but I believe Mary would have still been pregnant. Mary would not have that faith to believe that she can be pregnant and give birth to a bouncing baby boy in two weeks. And then also because she was subscribing to the law of process so that we may learn, Jesus grew. But there's no record in scripture that it was nine months. Expect unusual results in your life as you believe God. I, I cannot get usual results in my life. No. Usual results mean you are scientific. Unusual results mean there is a finger. There is a word upon your life. There is a word upon your life. Expect it. Expect it. Unusual results. Unusual results by the word of God. Unusual ministry. Unusual business. By the word of God. Look the testimony the lady shared happy i'm sure many of you didn't believe it that she said she was listening to um um uh, what they call it a message at six percent and i'm sure some of you will go and ask her later confess is it true let me tell you brothers and sisters my phone has almost died i was on the trip i held it it started charging from my hand charging till it finished i know some of you will not believe it something has happened to our generation we have reduced ourselves back from true spirituality to a realm where we are so sensual and carnal we want to calculate how can a happen to b to make it c and god says the word plus anything is equal to what i want the word plus anything that's god's equation the word plus a failure can give birth to a man of god Don't sit down and start asking God nonsense. Please listen. We have misused this scripture. Wisdom is profitable to direct, to endorse carnality and depravity of mind. Ah, let's be wise. Let's be reasonable. You keep being reasonable till life closes the door at you. This journey is a journey for men and women of faith. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are times you would think you had God but you'll find out it wasn't God. Don't be ashamed and let it not stop you from taking action the next time you hear that is God. Keep making the mistakes till you learn. God will protect you with his love and integrity. It's not easy for people to just derail like that. The sincerity of your heart will compel the mercy of God to guide you. Don't be afraid of making the mistake. That's how you learn. I'll be lying if I tell you every hearing God that I think I've had was really him. As I have grown, I found out that, ah, that other time, so it wasn't him. But it still doesn't matter. His grace and his mercy, you exercise yourself unto godliness. The fear of believing God has destroyed many people. I believe him today. If God tells me, tell Emeka, I will bless him. When I say Emeka, it doesn't have to fall down and roll. I have sent the word. If it never happens, it's because he did not engage it. He allowed the seed to be barren. But if Emeka believes that word, like Mary, he may not even know how the thing happens. The same word will now start scouting for the men that will make that word come to pass. Where is your house? In the realm of the spirit, it will take the word of God and you're believing it to make it your experience where are your children where are your well-behaved children not just in your brain in the realm of the spirit it takes faith to bring it where is the property of koinonia where is the headquarters of koinonia it's in the realm of the spirit it will take faith to bring it are we together apostle where is my job I've been eyeing civil defense. Take your eyes from civil defense and look on to Zion. Are we together? You look at civil defense, you'll be disappointed to your, to your own pain. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. Question, from whence cometh my help? He says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker, not from my father, not from my uncle. He can use them, but my help comes from God. Say after me, my help comes from the Lord. So don't get up and start moving around the street like a fugitive, like someone who does not have help. You move around and say, look, life safe. Look at the way life is working. Look at my only shoe. Look at this. Don't talk like that. 
the word of God is upon me. I may be weak now, but the word of God has declared that I'm strong. The word of God has declared that Gentiles come to my light. I believe it. In the name of Jesus, I believe. I expect the appearance of Gentiles. The just shall live by faith. Let me tell you what will happen to you when many people, especially and mistakenly, I have noticed a trend that many matured believers are throwing away the reality of walking by faith simply because of higher dimensions of revelation. You find somebody saying this now and they say, ah, ah, you are still a baby Christian. You should have known that God will still do it. You will leave the rules. You will never get the result. You must remain childlike. There are times I walk around my room. I wake up in the night like a zombie. I'm just walking around in the name of Jesus. Joshua Selman, you are a royal diadem in the hands of the Lord. The favor of God is upon you. Koinonia is growing strong by the spirit of the living God. Lord, you spoke to me. You declared that this is my year of triumph. I will say it is your, if I say it's your own year of triumph, you can enjoy it and I may never enjoy it. I can carry my pride and sit down and by December 31st, the fact that the word came through me does not mean it's also not for me. That's why I listen to Koinonia messages. And I receive the prophecies because the word only passes through a man but it is for men are we together the journey of faith are you walking by faith are you speaking by faith are you living by faith apostle I'm only I'm 40 years now as a lady look at me which man will come to marry me what did God tell you God told me a good man is coming to get married to me then stay there stay there and die there and let God apologize to you for lying to you but stay let God apologize to you for lying to you but stay there are you getting what I'm saying I'm teaching you how to walk by faith please don't sit down and be overly scientific and intellectual about your life it won't happen that way it won't happen that way let me tell you something um, the Lord spoke to me a particular season and said I am bringing a particular number of people to sow into your life and to sow into the ministry when the Lord told me I said Lord this is your word I believe it do you know I believe the Lord and sometimes people will send me recharge card 100 naira I say Lord thank you I celebrate your doing you spoke to me I'm seeing a performance you don't just sit down and say Lord is he 100 naira you are talking about don't play games with me I'm not a small child no whether it is the fist or a finger is still God so you celebrate it Lord if I if I see a finger then there must be a hand if I see a hand there must be a personality thank you for the finger because the hand is coming and I tell you true to God's word true to God's word hallelujah the Lord told me through the messages he would send these things all over the teachings all over all around I believed it when he said it I believed it at that time there was no possibility to see this but I believed it right now from taxi drivers to men of God to churches everywhere they say koinonia messages they say Kai, the guy is lucky he's just intelligent this is not intelligence this is the foolishness of believing God versus his power that responds when men believe him the same way God can speak to you and say dance for one hour and receive your husband and say God please don't don't make a fool out of me I'm not I'm not stupid God will say that's my word for you it's not the word for everybody and you will be dancing like a fool for one hour and then the devil will make sure that one mocker comes to knock ah are you okay this one that you are shouting I'm fine what are you doing dancing for what forget it they <laughs> say hey church 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 is turning people into stupid things you see that they are like that guy that told the king in Samaria he said that told Elisha I said ah, even if God will open the heaven will we be able to do this he said you will see it you will never eat of it hallelujah 
there is nothing God tells me that I will not believe him I'm not afraid if I find out he's not the one I will say okay God I believe I thought it was you thank God there is restoration in the kingdom so it doesn't make any difference but I will keep flexing my muscles what has God told you that the devil is about to cheat you now and tell you that it was not God what has God told you that the devil is about to tell you oh your family forget all those people can you believe God don't ask how it will happen just say Lord I believe you pray in one minute before I take the second session quickly pray Lord I believe you you have spoken this concerning me I believe you I believe you pray I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my voice to you awesome God awesome God I lift my hands to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God The Lord declared unto Abraham that he will be the father of many nations. The Lord declared to Abraham that in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham was old, stricken. Sarah was old, stricken. Had passed menopause as it is in the manner of women. But they had faith. He counted him faithful. The Bible says he wavered not at his faith through unbelief unbending unshakable persuasion god may call you to be a prophet and for 10 years you will not see one vision not even one dream stay there lord you said the prophetic office is for me i believe you every word that god has spoken concerning me i write it down and once in a while when you see my notebooks you don't like them because some of them are old but i would never throw them I will use gum, sellotape, fix them because those things control my destiny. Do you know when God spoke to me about Koinonia? 2005. And I pick it and I look at it. Lord, you have done this and that. In the name of Jesus, I trust you. This is what will happen. One day we will stand like this in Koinonia's international headquarters. I will remind you. I will remind you. People will say, wow, this guy is so lucky. You mean people like you like that? Nobody is lucky. Everybody is faithful. You push your faith until you make it happen. <sighs> Number two, we'll stop somewhere and pray. The journey of faith is the first. Number two, I title it the track record. Number two, the track record. The track record you want to become great in the kingdom you not only trust God enough or alone you must have a track record most people don't know what a track record is in the spirit in the physical there is how they can get information about you is that true because there is a track record they can get have you been involved in any criminal activity have you been involved in this how old are you and they try to check with the police have they filed any case with this with that okay we can allow you go to any nation because you are not associated with any terrorist group there was a track record of being a well-behaved citizen in your country when they bring out your information and they find out in 10 years you were in prison five times are we together now and this happened they would detain you and say no 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 we don't consider this guy healthy to be lifted to that nation that's how it is in the spirit let me tell you something god does not use your past but he uses your track record a track record is is what validates that you are qualified it is still by grace but that qualification is based on capacity track record this is the hardest part of the journey to greatness. 
establishing a track record in the spirit a track record of godliness a track record of prayer a track record of fasting a track record of consistency a track record of patience a track record of endurance years ago i saw a gentleman who graduated from nda and i saw his calendar they made a calendar he was well you know in his apparel and they wrote his name whatever it is that they wrote and then under like a caption they just wrote a testimony of endurance testimony because from day one as soon as he entered nda they started kicking him up and down giving him broom to sweep he cried and saw his mother waving him goodbye and now that guy was at the other side of his pain rejoicing with his badge and he sees one civilian who has not been trained try to stop him and he says frog jump quickly let me show you that i have been authorized are we together and the civilian i will beat you and he says there's only one part of your body i can touch and you will die not fall down i was shown in the military camp that men are like machines there is one part of their body you touch they fall down and die you are there bragging because you are big i'm not just wearing uniform for nothing the uniform means i've been given secrets i went through things that's how you come out and the devil looks like you and thinks every young man is just like that i will rubbish you at least and he says ah, that's what you are doing to me he said, i will do it again and again because i was shown something about you i didn't know you were this weak my staying power there was a track record if you don't have a track record you cannot be committed the true grace of the kingdom first samuel chapter 22 and verse 1 and 2 the bible speaks about david the journey from his exit from saul running away to the throne he was in a cave that the bible identifies as atulam it was a place of dissertation it was a place of rejection the bible says therefore david departed thence and escaped they wanted to kill him but he ran to a cave called adulam and remained there like a fugitive and a vagabond but a man was creating a track record a track record notice in the bible moses left egypt and was in the wilderness a track record the Bible just tells us about Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite. He was not born an adult. There was a track record. Look at John the Baptist. Who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. He was in the wilderness. Certain things were being taught him there. He was eating locusts and wild honey. Until his season of appearing. What of Jesus? From age 12, ladies and gentlemen. We never hear anything about Jesus again until age 30. 18 years of silence read your bible from age 12 you don't read one thing about jesus again until age 30. what happened for 18 years there are all kinds of theories some postulate that he went to india to go and learn under buddha some postulate that he went to uk i mean all kinds of postulations here and there but one thing i know is that at age 30 whilst john was 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 baptizing people here comes jesus from wherever he had been and he came out and he said behold the lamb do you have the track record many pastors want the loyalty of people without a track record who has tested you has god tested you with money has god tested you with power has god tested you with the anointing has god tested you with failure don't just sit down and expect to have a large church out of nowhere some of these our balloon expectations is why we are disappointed no matter how fiery you are you will not escape the test that creates a track record hmm. let me show you something i found that really blessed me give us hebrews 11 please hebrews 11 and we'll read from verse 24 to 29 hebrews 11 and 24 we are going to pray Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. 24. Read it with me, please. One, two, read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, adulthood now, refused to be called Pharaoh's, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing. Hold on choosing 
how can a man choose affliction choosing rather to suffer affliction so that he can prove that he's on God's side is a choice than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season 26 esteeming the reproach of Christ of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward we are reading to 29 by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he what endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the passover and the sprinkling of blood lest you know this and that and that and then 29 the bible says by faith he passed through the red sea as by dry land which the egyptians are saying to do were drowned by faith he made a choice how can a man choose to suffer and he says by faith track record you would have bribed and you would have been rich since 2006 but by faith you chose that i will walk in integrity and it costed you some of our parents today would have been multi-millionaires if only they signed one signature they refused to sign that signature and for 20 years they are paying the price it's a track record the realm of the spirit pays attention to your track record is God speaking to us? Track record. When you finish a great meeting and God helps you, 30 people in the fellowship, and all of a sudden you finish, and when you are alone, you get down on your knees. Lord, thank you for the privilege. You gave me the privilege to lead these people. It's a track record. The heavens are witnessing it. Remember, you are the one who is going to be great, but God is watching the track record. Somebody gives you 100 naira, another person gives you 1 million. God sees how you thank him for two of them. You just throw the envelope with 100 naira and say, Lord, this is money. Thank you. He's watching your heart. You bring all of them together and say, Lord, whether it is 100 naira or it is 10 million, I thank you. You are the doer. He's watching you removing the tithe when no one is supervising you. It's a track record. Many of us do not know that God accredits men. That's why you will see certain people you think should rise and God says, leave them there. You better leave him there. Leave the people there because God knows what he's seeing. Koinonia fast and you are inside. All of a sudden, ah, bring me yam. Add exos, bring ketchup and you just eat and belch and then come out with your mouth dry track record one day you will tell one spirit leave and that spirit says you you you, you think that everybody's an idiot there are many men of god that don't give they say give but they don't give there is no track record The last time they gave tight was five years ago. No track record. Are we together? You need track record. You need a track record in the realm of the spirit. Somebody gives you a new phone. Ah, this cheap phone. 5,000. Lord, is this all you could? I prayed for two weeks. And God is watching your heart. It's a track record. A track record of ingratitude you are not ready for the iPhone it will never come are we together there are many pastors three members four members and you see them preaching with their heart and loving God do you have transport money there are just five of you would you mind coming to eat in our house since you are five we prepared meals enough and the Lord is saying look at him look at this you see him preparing to talk to five people as if he's preaching in a convention and God says that's my son not that you sit down and snore away then one day they are invited you say is a big church or small say, ah 1002 you say you mean it ah let's go and buy suto because God is in that church you see those kinds of things is why many people never rise whether I'm counseling what do you know when we round off now and I stand to counsel people I give it the same seriousness because it is someone's destiny do you have a track record of trust
can God trust you? What have you done with what he gave you? He gave you a little level of wisdom. What have you done with it? He gave you a little level of influence. What did you do with it? He gave you intelligence. God never gives you a harvest. He gives you a seed and watches your management of it. You need a track record. And part of establishing that track record may require you going through what I call the furnace of affliction. <laughs> you see, Ba? This furnace of affliction you see is not every negative thing that is demonic. Let me show you something. Second Corinthians, please. We'll find somewhere to pray. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 to 10. Please, quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 to to 10 let me show you what happens here the fullness of affliction now let me tell you I don't believe God causes tragedies no he doesn't but I believe God can take advantage of every situation and produce glory out of it watch this the goal before I read this the goal of this season of creating a track record is to reveal to you the weaknesses and the limitations of your human nature outside of the agency of the spirit the goal is to strengthen your dependence on the holy spirit you will see how weak how frail how incapacitated you are as a person outside of the assistance of god dependence on the holy spirit no longer becomes something you do just because you are in ministry you have learned by your passing through the furnace of affliction by your passing through these seasons creating a track record it is seldom um a very painful process i don't think there are exceptions it is at this time that you will pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen yet you can minister to somebody somebody comes for counseling immediately a word will come as soon as you leave them you say god what is this and the heavens look like they're quiet there is a track record this is where men are separated from the boys this is where capacity is built. The end product of this track record is called an exchange where his strength swallows up your weakness. Where you are alive but no longer by your strength. You are alive by another agency that is not human. Now you are ready for the throne. Now you are ready for glory. There is no level of persecution that will shift your faith again. You have come to a point where you have gained stature in the spirit. Don't be afraid of establishing the track record. It is painful, many times embarrassing, discomforting. Creating a track record in the spirit will sting your ego beyond your imagination. Endure the pain, despise the mockery. God is doing something with your life. Gather your pain and your shame together because you will need them. They will strengthen you. Be careful what you call embarrassment. That will be your trophy tomorrow. Go through the pain. Track record. Are we together? Say track record. That one day you can say once upon a time. When I started ministry. We did not even have 10 naira to buy pure water. Yet we loved God. And God and men can testify. Do you know? Listen. When you see people become loyal to a man and to the teachings, it's not just because you are anointed alone. There is a track record. Are we together? You can say, oh, remember when we used to meet in the rain and there is a human agent that says yes. So if somebody now says, oh, pastors are doing church just for money, there will be a system of defense for you because there was a track record. Someone will say, I remember Emeka. I remember him. I remember us having crusade in the rain where we shouldn't do it but he still did it no I testify that this person loves God when it comes to a track record it's not only God that testifies men must testify that there is a track record people want to invite you to a big ministry they will ask questions who knows about this person which other ministries have invited him did you behave well did you preach well? 
were you respectful are you somebody who is matured and honoring by that track record a door will be open don't trivialize the passion to create track record you can ruin a great future when you refuse yourself let me tell you track record is a very you create it in a way that most times will be shameful because god will expose you to the eyes of all men they will see everything about you they will see your weaknesses they will see your limitations they will see your mistakes and you'll be saying lord why are you allowing people to see this and god will say so that there will be witnesses when i lift you witnesses there was a reason why god wanted people to see rahab he would have quickly preached to rahab and they would have come to meet a renewed rahab no meet the rahab sitting on the fence as a prostitute so that when i convert her and she becomes the great grandmother of jesus i can by her life show that i can use anybody listen for many years i wondered why the bible sometimes can be vulgar you will see informations that sorry to use the word explicit contents some contents in the when you really read some things in the bible you'll be like kai did god intend for children to read this i just think this is me as a human being lord this information is it really necessary did you have to put it there why will God, sometimes God will talk about the dealings of people, maybe with women or with some, and God can go into, remember all scriptures was inspired of the Holy Ghost. It can be so meticulous to capture information that you are like, ah, ah, God, we are adults. We already know what you mean. Do you know why God does that? So that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. So that when they see you tomorrow, they say ah, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets let me tell you what for you today is shame tomorrow will be your system of defense did you hear what I said yes don't be ashamed everybody knows you are a single dad everybody knows you are a single mom and people look at you when God begins to use you and somebody says are you sure this lady did not do divination somebody will stand up and say I knew how when she could not take care of two children three children yet she loved god creating a track record will force you to be naked before everybody sometimes the judges in your season of track record are your own enemies and god will be the one to keep a chair for them to sit down ah. <laughs> ah. i know you don't like what i'm saying but it's true sometimes they are driving you out of the house with your wife and all of a sudden your sarcastic neighbors are there watching you are saying god but did you have to allow the neighbors to see our shame and god says just watch what i'm doing it's a movie there's part one part two part three part four part four is when you return back with your family in power and glory and you come to greet the neighbors and they say no 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 it's a lie when you see the enemies of a man testifying about god's goodness a track record made it happen why am i telling you this some of you right now listen listen some of you are in the most uncomfortable situations in your life your ego has been stung everything in your life that represents honor seems like it has been taken away from you i bring you a word of hope weep not god is using your life to create a track record lord why will i serve you and be crying and then you make me cry before men so that when you smile they will know the god of heaven took you through this or that because some of you the testimony of your life people will never believe it when they see what god has done they can take it for granted and say you were just lucky and so god will say if it is your church members that see you they can say it is church manipulation but god will allow a non-believing person that you know doesn't lie to see it and he's the one who will stand up and say no i know there was a reason why nicodemus came to jesus by night as a witness there had to be a witness in the among the scribes and the sanhedrin that he was god do you know jesus hung naked everybody say a track record jesus the son of the living god crying should i trust that kind of person 
Jesus, are you that weak? You are in Gethsemane. What business do you have to do with tears? Are you not the one who should wipe tears? And the father kept silent. A track record. Imagine the throne without the cross. Track record. They put a crown of thorn upon his head. You would think that the power of the world should throw them away. But the thorns entered and real blood came out. Track record. They whipped him. 40 stripes save one. Do you know that they did not hang Jesus with a covering? He was naked. The word, please, Abba Father, talk to us. Have you lost your power? Did somebody vote you out of the throne? And heaven was silent. Here's what Jesus said. Eloi, Eloi. If Jesus didn't say this, we would think that, oh, he was a macho man. Jesus cried in frustration. Eloi, Eloi. Lamak sabachthani. Father, I, I understand the men forsaking me. But why have you forsaken me? You would have said, Jesus, don't fall our hand. The father was silent. And he said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus died. Life died. Life died. When he died, he went to hell. All the demons were on him. Their creator, they were on him to force him to bow. Look at the humiliation he went through. It was a furnace of affliction. But hallelujah, when the legal claims of justice were paid, the Bible says he shook them. He made a public show of them. And all of a sudden, he went to Hades, the place of the dead, and preached to the departed saints and opened the gates and said, follow me. He had to be the firstborn among them that were resurrected. And the Bible says, Jesus resurrected and said, all hail. I know that I've gone through Adulam, but now is the time for the manifestation. Maybe we'll take that one next week no greatness listen this dimension your fasting will never take it away from you believe what i'm telling you master in the you know the millennial kingdom when you come to reign can you grant that my son two of my sons will sit at your left and right jesus didn't say the position is not vacant he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there is a price listen do you know why god judges you when you talk about certain people even in the secret it's not that god is wicked that track record is a voice in the spirit are we together now ah what is there with papa deboe what is there all these men jare there's nothing special and that track record like the blood of abel cries to heaven lord someone is mocking your anointed they mocked the prophet and said you bald-headed man look small children was god so unmerciful she bears came out and devoured the children he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm but there is a track record Kononia, we are going to pray please help that lady listen some of you right now you are in the black book of your entire family you are wondering why do they all hate me what wrong have i done god has exposed your weaknesses and your flaws before everybody that's the same way he will expose your glory too he won't just expose your weakness and leave you everybody saw you without results i'm proud of everything in my life today it's one of the reasons why people believe what god has done if i came from another city into zaria people may probably think uh, everything god did he did in this city it was in the presence of all and sundry and i give him all the praise please hear me don't cry just because the landlord is chasing you out of the house you trusted god don't worry you may endure the shame but the day you will still come to that same place and build an estate even the most hardened unbeliever will say i know this man i know this man i know this man let me tell you something years ago 
people said a lot of things about me and you know i don't talk too much about all those things but some of them men in fact most of them if not all were well-meaning sincere people just because of how very controversial the dimensions of god in my life was you know and people said all kinds of things and sometimes those things were painful some were wrong some were insincere you know and so on and so forth people just said all kinds of things and then many years later i remember when i used to do counseling some of those same families that said very some maybe even very nasty things some of them now did not know that i was the same person they just kept hearing this person this person apostle apostle and some of those same families came for counseling i could identify them and you see them come with wine and say man of god what a privilege i've heard about you and i say please sit down sir please sit down ma sir if you know what is happening in my life and this thing is 10 years old i say so when you were shouting at me you also had problems in your life when you were acting as if nothing was wrong with you and i pray for them with all my heart and bless them and they get down on their knees i say god you <laughs> you don't have to worry and don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning troubles they don't last always help me for there's a friend in jesus and he will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken tonight just lift your hands and say oh i know that i can make it i know that i can stay no matter what comes no your life. Matter what may come my way my life is in your hands with jesus i can take it with jesus i can take it to me can anything good come out of your life yes sir apostle you don't know what i've done with my life can anything good come out yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir can anything good come out can god change my financial life i know you are crying now there's no food to eat don't give up it looks like god is not with you hear me koinonia it is the betting of glory there is a relationship between death and glory why did god allow this pain this shame happen it is the birthing of glory the bible says hear me it says for our light afflictions which walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory our light afflictions which is but for a moment but for a moment listen God is producing glory out of your life are you hearing what I'm saying tonight after this program I want you to call anybody who is about to give up on God and say Lord I'm tired I've done my best I'm tired I have I have kept the faith anything you hear believe it tell the person don't give up you are at the edge it's called the track record for 10 years yes sir is the track record for 20 years as abraham 25 years track record moses 40 years jesus 30 years is not unusual but as soon as zion travails she shall put foot listen let me speak to you everything god told you you have not seen one of it come to pass he's watching you satan is foolishly engineering men to laugh at you but the day god will turn aside and turn around your life even you you will be surprised hallelujah are we together thank god that what i could not eat yesterday because of the track record he has brought it to my table today the places i could not go yesterday 
listen this is why let me encourage you don't rush your life don't be ashamed of where you are now don't be ashamed of the level of the anointing you have if all your anointing can heal is headache do it faithfully don't let people look at you and say at this level shame on you only headache no problem just go i don't know what god told you but i i know what he told me i will stay i will stay all the days of my appointed time i will stay it may be a thing of mockery listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters God will open up your nakedness in the face of everyone. Don't be ashamed. Jesus did it. When you stand in that cross and people are looking at you and saying, he healed others. He took Lazarus down. Don't you have the power? Man of God, I hear you have cancer. You healed people. Well, I mean, what kind of thing is this? Which kind of God do you serve? Let me tell you the truth. We are going to pray. Listen, there are times when until God proves men wrong, nothing about your life can say they are wrong. Everything they say looks right until God speaks. <laughs> ah, until God speaks. Until God speaks. I wish you would have an answer for every accuser, but there are times that your mouth will be shut. It will cleave to the roof of your tongue. You don't have any answer because everything your accuser say look right until god speaks but when god is ready to speak he will come to the grave where you are lying down and say my son it's time to arise and he will arise and bring you out while people are talking about your funeral there you stand in another body glorified and god looks at you and says this is my beloved son and he say which one i thought you died he says, it's true he died but I am the resurrection and the life. I can bring any family out. I can bring any villager out. Can, I, can God use this village lady, this village man? Why will God come and give a great man to this village girl that cannot even speak English? And God says, young lady, continue your track record. I know you didn't have the privilege of doing anything. Just relax. When the time is fully come, I will lift your life like a trophy and all will see and they will give him glory. Listen, my life is a testimony of this. I know. I know. There are times I have not been able to eat in the night. Not because I didn't want to eat. There was no money. I still loved him. While you are crying, in the night tears coming out of your eyes can you still turn and say lord i count you faithful and the devil will say why don't you curse god and die and he said though he slay me though he slay me though he slay me you stand before the board spilling over for the second time and you see five carryovers and everybody looks at you and nods their head and says shame on you and you don't have anything to say because they are right and you stand before god and say lord what do i make out of my life and he says don't worry you will hold your certificate one day and say lord when when you may stand and there's no school fees your mother calling you your father calling you and you quote scripture isn't it amazing that sometimes the situations that you are a victim of is what God will send you to go and liberate others in while you are still suffering from it. You are suffering from the pain. No child. And then God will make people to anoint you and, and I mean to instruct, instruct you to go for a meeting. And somebody will say, please, can you pray for barren women? And you stand there looking like a fool. And God will say, do it. And he said, Lord, what testimony do I give? I don't have any result in my life. And he says, let me be your result. You may not have anything. And you say, well, I want to pray for all the barren women. And you may almost hear the voice of sarcasm. Where is your own child? What authorized you to stand? And you say, Lord, it is true. I do not stand in my own righteousness. But I stand by the grace of God. And while you are praying, others are laughing at you to your face. But an innocent woman will be on her knees, lifting her hands and say, I know he may not have a child but i lift my hands and after nine months she returns to you 
and says i was pregnant and say god this is unfair you left me like this it happened to abraham abraham said god what is this? stop telling me about these things i am childless my servants have children they are just respecting me for respect sake when will i have my own child okay use here is here is one of my servants let him have a child and god said no your own child Don't be ashamed, brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Life can be painful, but you are creating a track record. After tonight's meeting, call your father, call your mother. Say, I now know why we are crying. It's because we are following the path of greatness. It's because my life is not ordinary. I now see why no man has come to me to ask me out. I thought it was something wrong. But God, you have been testing. I watch people that have raised getting married. And me, no man is coming. Lord, I now know that it's because of the anointing upon my life. It's because of the generations that will come from me. And you find reasons to be happy even when there is no reason. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Just three minutes. Lord, the grace to stay until the track record is established. Lift your voice and pray. Maybe painful, but I receive the grace. Let the mockers mock. Let the scorners scorn. Let the naysayers continue to speak. Let the pronunciators, let them talk, let everybody speak. But I make up my mind, I'm going to stay all the days of my appointed time I stay. Your word will try me as gold and I will come out as a trophy, a royal diadem. A message to the nations that you are still the lifter of men. That you are still the lifter of men. Pray tonight, Koinonia. I may be at the cave of Adullam but in the name of Jesus I stay faithful even in tears I stay faithful even in imminent defeat I stay faithful in the midst of mockery in the midst of trials in the midst of approving stay faithful stay faithful stay faithful Stay faithful. We're rounding up. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song, Thou, O Lord. Yes. No. The glory and the lifter of my head. I just want to sing it before we end this service. But Thou, O Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, o Lord, had a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. Say after me in the name of Jesus everything in my life that represents shame that represents pain will become my glory tomorrow say it again everything in my life that represents pain that represents shame will become my glory tomorrow i receive grace to endure I receive grace to stay. I receive grace to continue. I receive grace to not allow the mockery, the scornings, the naysayings detract me. I receive grace to stay until greatness comes. Pray that prayer. That's our last prayer tonight. Lord, I receive grace. Brothers and sisters, weeping will not happen forever. You will not continue to cry forever. I assure you, the moment of joy is coming. The season of glory is coming.
a season of beauty beauty for ashes beauty for ashes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness everything you have gone through today will produce glory in your life everything you have gone through today is for the testimony of his name hallelujah hallelujah while standing everybody i spoke to us about an encounter you need to encounter jesus that's the foundation of everything about your life just help those who are crying there are people here overflow one two three and many outside you're here and you're saying man of god i really need jesus with my heart and my life i tonight's teaching has so touched me and i don't want to pretend it i want to run to jesus there are other people saying apostle all kinds of things have happened in my life i did not even believe that the lord can accept me again but now that i've heard you i'm ready to come and rededicate my life please help those outside wherever you are aside from overflow three that i'll just request that you move forward because of time please we have one minute for this wherever you are i'd like you to boldly make that decision come up right now to the front come up right now as everyone is clapping come up right now leave your seat and come to the front don't sit back come up to the front very quickly everybody god bless you everybody make your way quickly i believe there are people the lord is speaking to it's not compulsory but don't waste tonight's meeting let's appreciate them as they come god bless you 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 she's under the anointing help her god bless you run to jesus run to jesus he can give you a new beginning i don't care how things have been come to him come to him koinonia are you celebrating people they are running to jesus he will give you a new beginning don't mind the mockers don't mind the scorners your life is still great his testimony is still upon your destiny <laughs> hallelujah god bless you those online who are following please help the lady under the anointing now let me tell you brothers and sisters i love you with all my heart I don't care how your life has been this is not only bethel this is a place of encounter are we together the lord jesus is giving you a brand new beginning i want you to lift your right hand and say after me some of you are rededicating your lives some of you is for the first time um those under the anointing as they are confessing don't 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 worry just hold them say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart and mean it say lord jesus tonight i have come to you just as i am i ask you to help me cleanse me i receive your life into my spirit i receive a new beginning i decree and declare that from tonight and forever i am a child of god destined for greatness destined for dominion i decree and declare that every hold satan has over my life is hereby broken now and forever in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you your precious people the ones you died for lord some of them are standing here filled with all kinds of pain some of them feeling rejected some of them feeling defeated but jesus i present to you the kinds of people you love to build the kinds of people you love to bring glory out of you have changed our lives do same for them tonight in the name of jesus fill them with your holy spirit oh god give them a new beginning grant them grace preserve them by your power in the name of jesus i take away every sense of guilt every sense of defeat from your life i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the lord gives you a new beginning from tonight you move forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ 
amen and amen i congratulate you ladies and gentlemen thank you for making this most noble decision now i want you to follow this gentleman all of you here follow the gentleman and overflow three there should be someone behind you please follow them very quickly there'll be a committee of people to just um address you very quickly and appreciate you thank you please help them hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye